what are we going to get into today? Well, we today we are going to make a heated mash tun. All right. But first things first. Welcome to Still Works and Brew. My name is Randy and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. All right, well, let's get the homework out of the way. Hey, there is five things that you can really do to help this channel out. And you, it, it will all be appreciated. Okay, first thing you could do is hit that subscribe button. A lot of you have, but there is some that has not. So please hit that subscribe button. And while you're doing that, you might as well hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when something out comes out new. Uh, please share us with your friends. Uh, give us that thumbs up if you like what you see, and please leave a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, so I know most of you know what this is, but I'm going to say it anyway. What is a mash tun? Well, a mash tun is something that you can put your, your grains and water and it's something to help hold the heat to a certain temperature for a certain amount of time to get a couple things done. Alright, so let's say that we put corn, you know, uh, ground corn in there, water, and we want to try to get them, we want to try to gelatinize that corn. Alright, so basically what that means is get that starch all soaked up with water to help it get out of the pieces of kernel and get, uh, get it gelatinized with water, cooked, whatever you want to call it, to, so to get it ready for, to convert that starch over into sugars. Alright, so that's step number one. So you got your, but what we need to do is maintain a temperature. Alright, and for corn, to cook the corn or gelatinize it, 158 to 178 degrees it will work very good, but it does take a while. Uh, a lot of people say that it works better at 194 to 212 degrees, and it speeds that process up a lot. Okay, so that's cooking your corn or gelatinizing your corn. Okay, the next. So if we got all our starches gelatinized, we need to take in starches and convert it to sugar. That's what the yeast wants, right? It can't do nothing with starch. It needs sugar. Okay, to convert the starches over into sugars, uh, we got a couple different methods. All right, and the magic temp for that is like 146 to 160. Can't go too hot because it could kill the enzymes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to maintain that temperature. You know, somewhere between uh, 146 and 160. And we'll do one or two things. We'll introduce regular, uh, let's say, powdered enzymes, liquid enzymes. And some of them have got high temperatures, but they can handle the heat better. But let's stay on track. Uh, or, which I do a lot because I love the taste of barley. And I think it just adds an aspect to uh, whatever I'm making. So, or if you're making, say, a whiskey with all grain. Anyway. So, to, to convert, we would add two row barley or six row barley that's been malted into that corn and keep it at the temperatures I said, and then that will convert those starches into sugars, right? And that's what we want, right? And then the last job of the mash tongue is to strain out all them grains once we've got the magic to happen. So we can either strain it into a fermentation bucket or into a brew pot if we were making beer, okay? And uh, it will leave, it will strain out all the grains behind, all right? Now, but we'll get into that later. Okay, so that was, that is the sparging or, you know, you rinse the grains with hot water. All right, so, like I said before, I think I've always used a, a, a drink cooler as my mash tun, but it's really showing its age, it's getting some cracks in it, and it is time to replace it. Okay, so it's time for new, and that's what we're here for today. All right, our new mash tun. All right. 
I got a 10 gallon pot here, right? 10 gallon pot, ball valve in the bottom, and we will be using you know, a false bottom in that. That fits in there nice and tight. All right, and then of course a lid. All right, so how are we going to heat it? Well, you could uh, heat it on stove or a, or or propane, but the problem I, I don't like about that is you got to constantly watch, 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 and plus you got a chance of scorching maybe on the bottom, and that's a no no. All right, so what I did find, and I thought it was pretty amazing. This is a electric heating belt, okay? And this one goes from 30 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. So that should have no problem maintaining a temperature of, let's say, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So, and it's so easy to use. Now, the only problem I found with it, it was just a little bit short to go around my 10 gallon pot. So what I ended up doing, he uses these, these springs to latch it on, so I extended them out with these little chains. So let's go ahead and stick that on. Let me move the camera down so you can see. Alright, and this is 110 volt. And it, it's so easy to put on, I just take the little chain that... Little fingers, if I get my fingers to work, and then just latch these little latches. Hey, once you get one on, it's easy. Not just slide that where I want it, nice and that. And I'll latch all three. And that holds it firmly against the, the pot. Alright. Okay. So and that was easy enough. I mean, I I bought this off of Amazon for $49. Okay. So that wasn't too bad. Alright, so the next step we put the false bottom in. Alright, and what we're gonna do now is I want to put a little bit of water in there and I want to see how that's going to heat up okay so let me get some water in the pot and then I'll be back okay I stuck six gallons of water in there and let's just turn this on the only thing I wish this thing had would be it's about 93 Celsius I wish I had a little light to told you it was on or not but oh well Let's see what the water is right now. I got 69 degrees. Okay, so it's 69 degrees. Let's set a timer if I figure it out. I mean the belt's getting nice and nice and warm. What's that belt temperature? If you check right there, look, see 192, 200 degrees, 205. Alright. I mean it's 175 over here. The warmest is right there at 200 some degrees. That's what the belt's putting into the pot. Okay. So, I don't think it's going to take very long. I mean, it's, 
it's already up to, and it's only been a few minutes, 76 degrees. We started at 69. So it's it's warming up, and that's true. See, it's hot, hot over here. Hot over here. Okay. I mean, and this is so simple. Okay. So I think it's going to work out great. Uh, so how am I going to use it? Okay, like I normally do, I boil water on my, um, uh, in my brew pot that I use for brewing. I heat up water to boiling. I add it to the grain. And normally I put it into the cooler mash tun. Uh, so I'm going to do it the same way. I'm not using this belt to boil the water. All I'm doing is to help it maintain temperature. So I'll boil my water, put it in the grain, add it to the, uh, my corn, let's say, and turn the belt on and maintain what temperature that I'm, whatever I'm working on, if I'm working on the corn or the grain, whatever the case may be. And it's going to maintain temperature. All right. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, and I didn't do it today, it's in the, it's in the process, is I'm going to make a blanket to insulate, once I get to this point, to insulate uh, the pot. Okay. And that will help maintain temperature, a little insulation. Uh, I went back and forth to different ways to insulate. Uh, I tried, I figured bubble wrap, I tried that. It won't handle the heat. Uh, it just kind of melts it. All the bubbles go flat. It's a foil line bubble flat, a bubble wrap. You, you've seen it before, you know. So, what I want to do is I want to make a blanket cover so it fits, puts on with Velcro, and I'll have two layers of the blanket. It's like a fleece blanket and a bubble wrap in, in the middle of it. And I want everything removable. Um, that's why I made the the blank, the heating element here, I made it removable. Because if you all know me, I'm messy. I'm good at making a mess. Well, I wanted a way to be able to take that stuff off and to clean everything. You know, that's a very important thing in this hobby, cleaning all your, uh, all your tools. Okay, so let me get back to where I was at. So I've done my grains, all that. I maintained the temperature that I wanted. I'm going to use... A, uh, a a bag, the nylon bag that I've used a lot of times, and with the new pulley system that I put up, where I can pick that bag up and because hey, we all know corn likes to plug everything up, so you sometimes you got to be able to move it. So I figured I could pick it up, put it back down, sparred water and stuff like that, and that's going to be our mash tun. So uh, I'm thinking, Ooh. nice and hot. Yep. So um, I mean, it's almost up to 90 degrees. Yeah, right. And it's only been what five minutes. So we went from 69 to. 89 and 500. That's pretty nice. I like that. Okay, but like I said, everything's removable, so we wash everything, take care of everything. Uh, yeah, let's see. So that's going to be our match time. I'm really looking forward to using this for the first time to see how it actually works. I mean, I believe it's going to work out great. Um, so hopefully, well, I need to make me some corn liquor here soon because, you know, with all the moonshine Wednesdays, yeah, I really need, uh, I need some more moonshine, okay? So I'm looking forward to that, and uh, I guess the last thing I got to say is, hey, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time here on Still Works in Brewing. Cheers, everybody. This will work out great.